How do you organize audio in Godot? In my projects, I like to organize my audio into three different structures. Sound cues, sound pools, and the sound manager. A sound cue is a node I create to prevent sounds from being cut off when I need to play the same sound over and over. This node will contain a list of audio stream players and an index. Whenever we request it to play a sound, it will play the next audio stream player in the list to prevent us from cutting off an audio stream player that is already playing. A sound pool is a collection of similar sounds that I can use to pick a random sound and play. This is useful for sound effects like footsteps, where you have several different footstep sounds and you want to play one at random. You can also use this class to prevent the same sound from being played twice in a row. Finally, the Sound Manager is an auto-loaded script I typically create to allow different objects to reuse the same sounds. This class isn't strictly necessary, but it does give a centralized place to organize your sounds. I think it has the potential to reduce the amount of nodes you need to instantiate. For example, if you have a button click sound, you don't need every button in the game to hold its own audio stream player. You can keep a few in the sound manager, reducing the number of audio stream players you need to create in queue free. In this video, I will go over how to create each of these classes. I like to use Godot with .NET and C Sharp, but you can apply all of these concepts in GDScript or any other language. I'll be using Godot 4 for this tutorial, but I've used these concepts many times in my Godot 3 projects. Let's start with the sound queue. Create a new scene called sound queue. In this example, I'm going to inherit from Node because I'm not using 3D or 2D spatial audio. If you want to use 3D or 2D spatial audio, then you should inherit from either a spatial or a Node 2D. Then, I'll attach a script to the sound queue. The first thing we are going to want is an exported property to tell our sound queue how many instances of the audio stream player we want to use. I will create an integer property called count with the export attribute. Next, I'll create a private int called underscore next to keep track of the next audio stream player we want to play. And then I'll create a private list of audio stream players. In the ready method, Let's get the first child and check if it's an audio stream player. If so, we'll duplicate this audio stream player using the count property and add them to the scene tree in our list. You'll notice we're making a pretty big assumption in this ready method. First, we're assuming that the sound queue has any children at all. And second, we're assuming that if there is a child, that it's an audio stream player. We can guard against the first issue by checking that the number of children is not zero. If it is zero, we can print a warning and return early. If you're using some kind of logging framework, this would be a good place to log the issue. You could also add a warning if the node has more than one child. We can make this experience in Godot a little nicer by creating a node configuration warning to remind us to add an audio stream player as a child. Make your sound queue class a tool and override the git configuration warning method. Check that it has children and that the first child is an audio stream player. Now in Godot, we'll see a warning if the sound queue doesn't have any children or if the first child is not an audio stream player. Finally, we'll write our play sound method. First, we'll validate that the next sound we want to play is not already playing. In this case, I'm preferring skipping a sound effect over cutting a sound effect off. If we notice this happening, we'll want to increase the count of our sound cue. Then we'll play the next audio stream player in the list and increment our next field. Finally, we perform a modulo operator using the audio stream player's count and this will make sure that the field wraps back around to zero once we've incremented past the size of our list. Let's check out an example of using a sound cue. Here I have a simple scene with a character, and each time I click, he shoots a fireball. Now I want to add a sound effect to the fireball attack. I'll add a sound cue to my player. Notice our configuration warning is reminding us that we need to add an audio stream player as a child. 
And so I'll add the audio stream player, select my sound effect, and then set the sound cues count to something like 5. We can tweak this as we see fit. In our player's code, we'll grab a reference to the sound cue in our ready function, and then whenever we fire a fireball, we'll call play sound. Now you can hear our sound effect every time we shoot a fireball. Now let's create the sound pool. Create a new scene called Sound Pool. I'll once again inherit from Node and attach a script. We have a couple of options here. We can either expect the Sound Pool to have audio stream players as its children, or we can reuse our sound cues and have a list of sound cues as its children. I'll go ahead and use sound cues. I may want to allow playing the same sound twice, or maybe my sound effects will last longer than the time it will take to play the next sound. This will just give me the most freedom in my project. In your script, create a list of sound cues, and in the ready method, iterate over your children and add any sound cues you find to the list. Next, we'll need a random number generator to pick the next sound to play. Now we can write a play random sound method. We'll use our random number generator to generate an index between 0 and the size of our list minus 1. Then, we'll play the sound cue at that index. If we want to prevent playing the same sound twice, we can create a private field called last index. We can get a random index in a do while loop. This will generate an index until we find one that is different from the last one we played. Then we set the last index field to this new index and play the sound. Finally, we can override the git configuration warnings method to validate that we have at least two sound cues as children. Using a sound pool isn't necessary if we're only going to have one sound effect we want to play. Make sure your script is marked as a tool to make these configuration warnings work. Back in our player script, I want to add some footstep sounds to the player. First, I'll add a sound pool to the player. You'll notice our configuration warning is there reminding us we need to add some sound cues. So I'll create a sound cue, add an audio stream player, and then duplicate the sound cue until I have one for each footstep sound I want to use. Finally, I'll drag the footstep sounds into each of the sound cues. The last thing I'd like to talk about is the sound manager. I often like to make a single auto-loaded scene where I can put sound pools or sound cues that contain sound effects that are shared across many entities in the game. Create a new scene called Sound Manager and inherit it from Node and add a script. Then go to Project, Project Settings, Auto-Load and add the Sound Manager as an auto-loaded scene. I'm going to use the singleton pattern here. In my Sound Manager script, I'll create a static property called Instance, and then in the Ready method, we'll set the static property to this. This will make our instance accessible anywhere in our code. From here, I like to set up a couple dictionaries to store my sound cues and my sound pools. If you want, you can create an interface and apply it to both your sound cue and sound pool classes, and then just maintain a single dictionary. Maybe I'll save that for a different video. Now, whenever I want to create a sound that multiple scenes can use, I'll create a sound cue or a sound pool on my sound manager. I'll add it to the dictionary, and then expose a public method to play that sound. In this example, I decided that I want my enemies to shoot fireballs as well, and so I can remove the sound cue from my player class and have it reference the sound manager. Now both my enemies and my player can reference the same sound. Thank you for watching the video. If this content was helpful to you, 
please consider liking and subscribing. And if you have slightly different ways of managing sound in your projects, I'd love to hear about that in the comments below.